everybody. It's been so long since I've done a uh, video <clears throat> and uh, I miss it. Um, I love doing it. Um, it does take time, but it's uh, a really a, a form of content that I really love. Um, and I've been really enjoying a lot of channels recently um, while I work. So I was just like, I need to make more. Um, so uh, it's going to be as sort of lo-fi as I, I can possibly make it. Um, this is, has been on my, my desk for a while. Um, and I've just been kind of looking at it and there's something here that, uh, I'm very interested in talking about. Um, and it's something that I've trying to do in my own comic work. Um, and I, uh, am a graphic novelist, um, comics, <laughs> uh, and my first book is coming out next year. Uh, I've just finished writing and drawing it and it is called, uh, Joe Death and the Graven Image. Um, here's some uh, character design sheets that I made for it. This is kind of the title character here. Joe is a, uh, a skeleton, um, kind of a personification of uh, Death or the Grim Reaper, um, kind of classic um, iconography, I guess you could say. And um, inside him uh, lives a little moth uh, named Blue. Um, and uh, they have a really fun um, relationship. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's sort of one of those, like, I'm looking at a lot of like classic Disney, um, uh, animal cartoon kind of stuff, uh, for him. And here's some more bugs. Um, this is a fun, a fun couple, fun pair. Um, and, uh, they're going to show up in the story. Um, and I'm really excited to share it, uh, when it is published, um, next year, but, uh, I'll be talking more about that later. I wanted to talk uh, specifically about this book and, um, what it represents to me and why I find it so valuable is the, it's like the marriage of simplicity and design, uh, icon, icon, iconography, icons, um, and realism or atmosphere. So for instance, um, this is not a bear. <laughs> this is a picture of bears. This is not a child. This is a picture of a girl. And we know that instantly when we see it because, uh, of important elements that are there. So for instance, you know, Fur, we read fur, we read animal eyes as opposed to human eyes. Um, and, uh, you know, instantly it's like bears, um, because of those realistic characteristics, but there's also the cartooning aspect of it. So bears don't, you know, stand like this. They don't, uh, wear clothes like this. Um, and so there's, uh, there's a lot of like, information being shown, uh, to us. Um, and it's a play between, um, readability. So quickly being able to read it. So like an icon. So yeah, <laughs> so, uh, and, and realism or atmosphere. So, um, I'll, I'll, uh, expand on that as we go through, but let me just flip through. Um, this is, uh, this is, Illustrated, it's a classic tale, obviously, Goldilocks and the Three Bears in a little golden book um, that belonged to Jonathan uh, Ellison years ago. Um, but this is illustrated by F. Ra Rajankovsky. Um, don't know how to pronounce it. I, th I believe he's Russian. But um, right away we get, uh, you know, this is what I love about visual illustrated books. This is fun. This is really fun here. It's, it's icons, but they're, they're fun icons, right? They're not, they're not completely flat. They are in perspective and we're going to see this through the whole book. So it's a beautiful setup here. So they're icons and they're readable, but they're not, they're not flat. They are in some sort of perspective, you know, maybe not completely accurate perspective, but we get some sort of 3D happening there. There's some there's some atmosphere um, happening with this with this table, with uh, the chairs, um, 
and there's so much variety as well, which is like these trees are like just dashed off. Uh, and there's a lot of charm in children's books. Um, charm that I find in a lot of like French comic books, for instance. Um, and you know, I love, I, I love, uh, comics in America. Um, and I'm getting to love them a lot more thanks to, uh, channels like Cartoonist Kayfabe who do an amazing job at, uh, speeding, let's say a young person like me up on comic culture in America, comic history. I think that's a really valuable show. Uh, and those guys are, are really fun to watch and listen to. Um, but, uh, one of the things with comics and what I'm interested in doing in American comics, or at least the comics that I'm publishing in America is bring something into comics, um, that isn't, that I don't find represented there. So, you know, charm, um, cartoon, cartoony isms, sort of like Jeff Smith's bone, that kind of thing is what I'm interested in. But I, I see it on happening here in a lot of fun ways. Um, and, this this uh, opening spread um, is uh, great. It's it's book design, and it's it's the artists and the designers having fun. I believe like this is uh, not part of the story. Um, it's the indicia kind of here. It's you know thirty ninth printing, so very popular, very popular book here printed in uh, nineteen seventy nine. Um, thirty ninth printing. Um, and this little illustration, it doesn't need to be here. It's above some copy. Um, and the, the story begins here, but it's, it kind of begins here. <laughs> if you know what I mean, it's leading into it. Um, and, uh, just the fun here that's happening, which is like this 3d, very carved, um, frame of this, of this wood, you know, it's, it's representational. It's like, this is, uh, this is, this is what bears would make, uh, of their pictures. This is the picture frames that bears would make, right? That, that life that they have, um, uh, is represented here in, in like their craftsmanship. So Feodor, which is the uh, first name of the illustrator. I'll, uh, I think I can pronounce that. I'll go with that. Feodor, I think is, is playing the role of, giving these characters life. So, you know, even in fun way, like really fun, subtle, varied ways of having the picture frames still have a little bit of sap, still have a little bit of um, life there and, and get, get this little uh, leaf on the side. Um, and here, it's interesting here how he stacks the characters, like, and they're all kind of looking in different directions. I think eyeline and character action is really interesting, you know, that's really powerful. And the variety in which characters in one image should be acting. Um, for instance, if you, if you take a photo of a group, uh, you'll notice like it takes a little bit of time to like get everyone's attention in one place, um, in towards a camera, right? So the little bear is like looking down at what he's going to catch, um, in his, uh, butterfly uh, catcher. The mom, I think is, uh, you know, spot on. She, she knows where the camera is and she's, she's definitely, uh, she's definitely the one that uh, knows what's going on. Uh, and, uh, the Papa bear is, uh, you know, I think that he's angry that there's a picture being taken at all. Uh, so that seems, you know, to line up with how life works. Um, so this is a really fun example of, uh, dimensionality and what I would say atmosphere, uh, atmosphere, uh, is that represent, it's like this, this two dimensional representation of a, a place, a real place, a real, um, group of objects. Um, when I look at this, I can almost remember the times in which I've been at like estate sales or, um, just like, well, you know, my grandparents or like their friends that had like a log cabin and like, this is, you know, this is what, this is what would be in those homes and the detail and the, um, the specific attributes of this chair 
and this chair and this chair are not iconographic. We can tell that they're chairs because they fit the same form as a chair, but they're very different personalities. Um, same with these beds. It, it, they are beds. No one is going to mistake that these are beds. And, but the, the particularities are different, extremely different and extremely fun. So it's fun. Like there's so much fun happening in the small particulars, like the rugs underneath chairs. You, he didn't have to draw rugs underneath chairs. Um, he didn't have to draw slippers underneath these beds but he's smart, uh, he is, you know, I, I do not know Fedor, but he obviously likes to have fun um, with his images. He obviously can picture himself in this scenario of, of being a bear, waking up. You're gonna want, you're gonna want slippers, right? Come on, who doesn't? I'm a slipper guy too, so I get it. Um, all right, so, pattern is what I'm noticing in a lot of these in a lot of these pages but specifically here it's so fun it's like it's so fun and different like you might wear a, a loud you know apron like this when, when it's going to get dirty it's um it, there's so much good stuff happening in this image and all the images but like Look, these are, this is Aspen, right? Like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Aspen has, has this type of bark, uh, this type of color, um, Papa Bear, Mom Bear, Baby Bear, they were out splitting wood. They use that wood to uh, put into their stove and, you know, make a, make a, uh, a porridge uh, for breakfast. And dang, it looks good. Um, <laughs> But she's still a bear, right? She's still a bear. She's not, she's not like, uh, she's not anthropomorphized into us, you know, really, you know, feeling cute and cuddly. Like she's still got her claws. She's very, you know, she still has very much her, uh, her teeth. Um, and uh, again, another, another picture of uh, perspective. Um, though not without, not without iconography, you know, everything here is clearly laid out um, in, in a type of forced perspective. It isn't, it, you know, it isn't, it isn't uh, having to correspond to uh, a floor and a, and a, and a wall and a doorway because it's against white, um, which is really fun. Okay, these, these two illustrations juxtaposed together are really interesting because they're, each of them is so charming and each of them is in different perspectives. So like this is the most extreme example of like folk art perspective, which is icons arranged on a flat plane, absolutely no horizon line. Um, and that's all this is, but there's so much variety in each of the icons, mushrooms, you know, the, you know, there's some trees that are a little similar, but for the most part, let's see, there's like probably five different varieties of trees uh, and plants going on here. Um, flowers, butterflies. Um, and you see clearly what, what they're all doing. Mama bear is picking, uh, herbs, baby bear is picking or is trying to, uh, capture butterflies and Papa Bear is just just going, just tramping, tramping through the forest. Um, and, you know, incredibly charming folk art piece. This, on the other hand, is uh, Goldilocks in a completely, you know, much more realistic perspective uh, than this guy, this, this uh, picture over here. It, it's like the horizon line is back there, you know, we've got trees covering it off, but like everything slopes back. So it's almost as if we're, we're standing right here and we're looking at, at the house. We can see the underside of the, um, underside of the canopy here. We can see, 
a very fun carving of a bear's head up here. So it's like we, the reader knows that the, that's the bear's house, right? Like that's, that's what she's doing um, just by looking at the images. And there's so much variety in the lines, in the objects that make up this house. Um, and it is in perspective. So this, this row of logs is, is much bigger than this row back here. Um, Goldilocks is, is very small. Um, yeah, just a wonderful thing. Like you don't, you can get, you know, I think in comics, I think just like in picture books, you, you have the ability to capture the audience on the spread that they're on. So, so obviously they can, they can look at this and think, oh, well maybe I'll go back and look at the perspective there and like, oh, it's a little different, but it doesn't matter. It's variety. People don't mind difference uh, when, they're, when they're in a movie or in a, um, a book, they like difference and it's called variety. Um, all right, so, uh, you know, just other, you know, more great stuff about like, just the particularities of this table. Um, very kind of realistic rendering, um, but without, without, without trying to trick you into thinking that this is an illustration, right? Beautiful. Um, I love this, this spread. This is a lot of heavy lifting here. This is three rooms, three different characteristic rooms in a kind of forced perspective and it's full, chock full of fun stuff. And it reiterates things that we've seen before, which are those beds, the slippers. Um, and you know, it's got fun, fun stuff, fun detail, like this picture, the window back here, the, um, the walls are different and they all correspond to who, who the bears are themselves. There's personality here, the papa bear, He's got all wood, <laughs> all wood in his room. Mama bear, she's refined. She's, she's a uh, classy, got a little piping up there for color, but you know, pink and uh, her, her color scheme works. It's really nice. Baby bear is uh, bright, colorful, youthful, um, contrasting colors. Uh, and Goldilocks, uh, again, it's, you know, it's, we don't need to see her body. We don't need to see this, the, the, the table. This is all we need for this. Um, and we get it. All right. Uh, really fun stuff. So I will point out these are different beds and this bed specifically stuff changes. So like stuff changes and can change, uh, through a picture book, through a comic, and audiences will be fine with that. <laughs> People will not be as so interested in the details. And again, it might even be interesting if they are into the details that things change. So for instance, let me go back. Uh, this, these are the three beds, right? These are the only three beds that we know that are in the, in the bear's house. Um, that one's very, uh, it was very bright and this is a uh, baby bears as well. When we look in that hall, it's different beds, right? It's, it's not, it's not these, this bed isn't represented. This isn't either. Uh, it's like a classic kind of, you know, sleigh kind of bed here. And Papa bears is this bright orange here. But in this, in this illustration, it's dark brown. And I believe it's because Feodor is looking at what are the needs of this particular illustration. It's not, he's not trying to, he's not uh, stuck to slavishly kind of representing these things um, in perfect um, uniformity. Uh, he's, he's looking at what are the needs of this particular image and these are icons. So it's a bed, it's a bed, it's a bed, it reads, it's fun, it's it's different. It may not be corresponding to what we laid out here, but that's fine. Um, similar to this, it's like, this is the bed that he needed to draw to do this illustration. It doesn't have to correspond to this one um, or this one. It, it This image has to be fun. If this image isn't fun, because it has to look like this, something in this image, 
then that's not what we're doing. That's not what he's doing. Uh, I, that's a lot of times how I work too, which is like, there's variety in, in the characters and what they look like in different settings in different scenes. Um, and I believe that's a type of organic, uh, representation of how, uh, people feel and act and in different, uh, scenarios in their lives. Anyway, uh, hope, uh, hope people can follow along there. I know this is kind of a flood of, uh, flood of, uh, you know, my thoughts. Um, and so it might not be super cohesive, but, uh, these bears also, they get scarier, they get scarier and scarier. And I just love how, I, I think this even has like a bit of red in her eye. It's just this little, this little death, death stare right here. Um, and Papa Bear, my gosh, we're going to look and see how scary he looks, right? Like this is the scariest picture of a, of a bear I've ever seen in a kid's book. And I love it because it's a bear. It's not a cartoon bear. It's a bear. Um, and you know, there's, uh, this is frightening, right? Like this is frightening. <laughs> Just these little, little tiny rings of death. And, uh, baby bear's not too happy either. All right. And they, you know, sort of Frankenstein walk up, um, and double page spread. I think this is the first double page spread, um, in the book. Uh, and I think that's important because it's kind of like saving it, you know, he's saving it for this moment in which they're going to go up and see what is happening in their house. You know, they are going to go up all together and, uh, check it out. So very much bears. They're not interested in, uh, cuddling this little, this little thing. And she knows it and she runs, you know, Goldilocks and the three bears, uh, you know, this to this, so much variety, very iconic, not in a setting, but we know where she, we know where this is and we know where she's, she's running from. Um, and that variety is so interesting. Like, if this were just, if this were full um, illustration and this were full illustration, just like uh, instead of a spot kind of, it would just be less, less variety. And I, I would say less interesting. And here we go again. This is a different house. Like where's that canopy that uh, Goldilocks was uh, knocking on, right? Like it's, it's not represented like this, this bear sculpture here, this is different, very different than this because he's not, he doesn't care about this illustration. He made this illustration because this is the funnest illustration he could do at this time for this page in juxtaposition with this page, this illustration, this is on its own. This is a new page. It's a new day. Do the image that is the most fun. Um, and I think that's what he's doing, uh, all throughout this book. Uh, I, I personally, again, love the iconography. This is a house. It's a very classic house. The bears are, are huge. You know, everything that we saw couldn't fit in this house. You know, it's not to scale. Nothing here is to scale, but it's fun. It's, it's iconically interesting and engaging and charming. I love the charm here. And I think it's, uh, I think it's missing in a lot of, um, a lot of comics, uh, in America. Um, and I, and I'd like to, uh, provide that. And I will show you more examples of, of that kind of thing when, uh, with, with more videos, but so good to be here. Thank you for, uh, stopping in, listening to me talk about this stuff. Um, I do have a blog post about this, uh, where I'll share some images here and, um, and, uh, yeah, there'll be more stuff there, but, uh, all right, that's it <laughs> later. All right. Before I flip the camera off completely, I did want to, um, exercise a little bit, uh, get a little bit more, um, you know, practical and uh, try to get, uh, a fuller experience from just looking at this. So, um, a lot of times I'll, I'll enjoy something so much, uh, a particular illustration or, um, comic and I'll, I'll need to 
re, re, you know, kind of have my go at it or learn from it. So um, I'm trying to be less precious with this stuff. I'm just trying to go in, um, copy essentially, but uh, you know, nothing has to be perfect. So I'm just gonna look at that um, group of chairs and I'm just going to draw um, and learn by doing it. So uh, I don't take my pencil off the page much and instead just try to remember that this is not for, you know, this is not for natural geographic. It doesn't have to be representative. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to look like an ill, Ill an illustration. It's supposed to look like a human being um, drew it. Um, we are definitely in a, in a uh, technological age. And my desire is more and more to um, highlight the differences in which uh, humans um, using physical material uh, medium um, can produce something better than um, through a computer. Um, I mean, I use a computer, I have a computer, you're obviously watching me through a computer. I don't hate computers, but I do think there's always the um, chance that the tools can over overpower the the message or 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 humanity, just humanity. Uh, and um, we can get into this idea that like, Everything should be perfect and everything should be, um, all the edges should be straight or the, uh, the chairs should be this kind of design. And I look at a lot of old uh, sculpture and um, folk stuff because there's so much um, charm there. I guess what I'm seeing a lot it represented over and over again in these types of things is that there's charm. So industrial manufacturing allows, you know, charm to be, uh, you know, completely taken out. Um, you can design something for mass production with, with charm, but the little imperfections um, <clears throat> are are taken away due to mass production. Even this book is is it's like four color printing, and um, it is uh, in some cases the illustrations are fuzzy um, because of the you know, it was sort of the registration for all four color four colors was uh, was off. Um, and because of that, it's a little fuzzy, but it's it's charming to me. Um, I looked on Amazon, and I think you can buy this version, but uh, it's cleaner. The images are sharper. But to me, they looked actually more um, blown out, uh, like like the the charm of that like four color printing um, seemed to be lessened in the newer printing because everyone's thinking, well, it should be you know you should you should see everything so clearly. I think in a lot of ways, like this happens in like, um, films, like noir movies, like it's like 80% black, you know, like so much shadow. And because of that depth, um, you know, that's kind of visual mystery, but then 
it's harder to do that. I, you know, I think in a, a computer generated world, um, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it will get better and, and that would be great to see a little more mystery, um, atmosphere in those, uh, digital methods. Um, because it would be kind of bringing the old, the old forward. Um, but anyway, all right, that was fun. Uh, I am actually going to just drop this into, um, Photoshop and I'm going to color it, do a little color study there. Uh, and you know, I, I'm, I'm very interested in just like getting somewhere fast with illustration. Uh, I spent a lot of time on Joe death trying to figure out how to even just draw well. And um, now I'm interested in just not unlearning that, but but definitely trying to um, speed up and just go, go from the gut kind of thing. So um, I might do a second layer. So like a lot of times I'll, uh, I'll you know, this is on bond paper um, and uh, I'll just go over to um, well, I'll do it live because, because, uh, that's, that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, no need to be timid, but now I'm going to kind of focus on, focus on the relationships, focus on what I want to get out of the image. I will, um, kind of like add some character to the line with like a stop and go line. Um, in some places and edges at this stage, I'll kind of think about the edges, um, as having a little bit more character. You know, variety, so like rougher wood. How this relates to like, I, don't know, I, I think it really does relate to the our lives, like our 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 actual lives outside of work, uh, or or outside of trying to make, let's say, profit off of art, or um, or even just like, yeah, it just causes us to I think look more so like, and to investigate or to be interested in like, oh, maybe I should go to a, an estate sale or like maybe I you know, should meet my neighbor who has that weird collection of items on his porch. Um, you know, maybe I could spend time hearing him talk about it um, while I draw it. Uh, and and uh, you would definitely find character that way. <laughs> there is, uh, there are characters everywhere. Most definitely in your in your neighborhood. And if they do have a lot of there are hoarders. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> because of the the kinds of things they'll collect, I think collecting is really interesting. Um, and I collect books. Um, if you don't have physical books, uh, I would strongly suggest it. Uh, you know, as you're learning, I'm, I'm, I, I am constantly battling against, um, wasting time through digital, uh, digital social media and, uh, you know, being, you know, finding amazing things to watch and, uh, learn from. And then, you know, balancing that with, oh shoot, like, oh, I haven't made anything, you know? So there's always this balance. And uh, physical books really do bring me into a certain physical space. It's like, there's no ads uh, around, you know, the edges of the paper. Um, I can shut off my phone. I can 
um, meditate in sort of private in a certain way uh, with the images that are printed and um, it's deep work I suppose is definitely the hot uh, the hot way of talking about that um, Cal Newport's book he's definitely highlighted the benefits of like getting in deep and limiting distraction um, so all right let's see what it looks like uh, in Photoshop all right here we are inside my computer and as you can see um, I did do more than just those chairs uh, I love that first page with the the uh, frame and the family of bears i thought it was so uh, cool and charming and um the last page which is that um the house so uh this is the blog article as you can see and i've got the pages laid out here um <clears throat> and uh yeah it was so fun to ha have this uh, relationship with this book, uh, even just for a little bit. Like I took maybe 30 to 40 minutes on this, on the drawing and the, um, value studies, uh, for, for these three, um, all total about 40 minutes. And that's like enough, you know, it's, it was enough for me to just have fun, learn some stuff and grow. Um, and, uh, just get me energized to do that with with my own work, you know, on my own uh, personal content, um, and uh, yeah. So I highly recommend like trying this. Uh, you know, I I, I I highly recommend buying physical books um, from you know cheap or expensive. However, you can get physical books. Um, I, I would say do that if you want to grow as an illustrator. Uh, or as a writer, um, there's something about just being with that physical object and being able to study and have have this type of relationship in which you're you're growing from a tradition. Um, and uh, yeah, so please, you know, if this has been helpful, please share it. Please uh, tell uh, tell your family members when you're um, at Christmas this year. Uh, uh, follow me on Instagram; I'm pretty active there, um, and join my newsletter um, and uh, let me show you what that is here my son is uh, trying to trying to talk over me it's okay though <laughs> um, this is my newsletter it's called old, old noggin and um, it's weekly and I'll, I uh, share this kind of stuff and uh, uh, just recommendations that I've been watching movies uh, other books that I've really enjoyed or to stuff that's happening uh, in in my head in the old noggin. Um, so please consider subscribing to that. And uh, thanks again for your time.